All right, welcome back to another edition of the Dirty Verdict. This is News Stories Edition. I'm one of your hosts, Peter Taft. This is Kyle Herbert. Welcome back, fair listeners. We are so pleased to have you. And Bill's not here. We have a different version of Bill. His name is Drew. You've heard from him before, if you were a faithful listener. Drew Bavona sitting in for Bill Ogden. Bill's at home. What, what was wrong with him? Swine uh, flu? We are, you know, school is back in session. And for those of y'all with younger children, that means colds and coughs and all kinds of it's new the, stuff. And so that is obviously not my problem anymore. I've built up my immunity after 27 years of having kids. So uh -huh. You're only 27 years old. No, my oldest son is Tasso. But speaking of your children, Peter. Yeah, so Kyle and I are back from a great trip up to Michigan where we watched University of Texas beat the mighty Michigan Wolverines. 30, what was it? How, was it was not close. It was not close. Uh, 34 to 12, I believe, or maybe something like that. Oh, I've been humming. Amanda knows better than I do. It was 31 to 12. So um, that was a very good game. For those of you all who like little touching Teary Eye Stories, Box Sports, um, in their pregame show, did a, about a six-minute piece on my son. Yeah, why, it was awesome. Why he changed his number to 16 in honor of his best friend who died uh, shortly after he graduated from high school. So um, I highly recommend that. It's very. I, I make a five-word um, appearance. Appearance. Which, Brief, uh, but compelling. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that was it, but that, that was good. And now we're on to... Did you, have you been humming, like, just hail to the victor's valiant? Like, mm, bah, 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 just like yeah. nonstop? Oh, I've, uh, yeah, I couldn't, um, I couldn't get out of my head. It's, I taped it. I mean, I did a video of the band coming and playing it, because it's a good... Oh, it's great. It's, it's a classic. Yeah. Well, all right. So, uh, yeah, that was a further. In other non-legal news, mm -hmm. James Earl Jones died today. today. Yeah, I know. And that's, that's today or yesterday? Yesterday. 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 Yeah, like, very sad. And so we are testing out a new lighting situation with a black tablecloth. I think it looks ridiculous. Uh, well, it's got a huge crease in the sort. Yeah, a huge crease. Yeah. It's really untenable. Yeah. Hold on. So, you mean 20 years from now... When we're doing a retrospective on the Dirty Verdict, the early years, we're going to, I'm going to say that this black cloak was in honor of the death of Darth Vader. Uh, and that's what we're going to go with because this is just, this is terrible. But if you're, right. if you're watching from YouTube, cloak, avert your eyes, oh Lord. Rest in peace. Rest in peace. A fantastic actor. And uh, my favorite, I mean, obviously Star Wars. I'm sure Bill would criticize me for liking Star Wars because there, I'm sure he's got some issue with it. But uh, Field of Dreams is a great movie, which another one that I'm sure Bill will have some. Well, I mean, the games. So the listeners out there would say that his best piece of work was coming back to America. Coming oh, to America. Yeah. The King. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, come on. Yeah. Anyhow, rest in peace, James Earl Jones. Okay, let's get into some legal news. Kyle, speaking of football, oh, yeah. before we go any further. Okay. okay. The, what's the name of the character? Fulsa Dune from Coney and the Barbarian? No. Mm. He, I think I was studying while you were reading. James Earl Jones was Fulsa Dune, the snake-headed guy in uh, Coney and. Great film and a great part for him until Kimberly Guilfoyle took it over. Mm -hmm. uh, She's a natural fit, which brings us to our final topic, non-legal. Tonight is the presidential debate. Yeah. This tonight? It's tonight, tonight at 8 o'clock. Amanda's oh. making us be done so she can We're watch. Going. I probably... Mm. I, we, we try to stay away from, from politics here, so Fair. we'll just let that... Fair. Uh, let that sit. It's just to pair with you. Well, I'm just saying that one of our producers, Amanda Orr, suggests that she needs to rush home to watch the debate so she can make up her mind. Okay. And I've, I've suggested that the only people in America mm -hmm. who have not made up their mind in this election are people that are just now coming out of a coma mm -hmm. from like 2015 or some other, some other vegetative stain and, and Amanda. I disagree with that. I think there's probably a lot of... Um, voters who don't own televisions no i think they i think they're i think there's probably i mean this is not me talking this is what is reported that there's a lot of people who have been trump voters all along and they're now kind of wanting to and they're afraid of of vice president harris or maybe some of her 
you know, her positions and they don't really know her because she's been kind of in the background, the, this I, presidency. Polling says that a lot of people don't understand what's behind her. Mm-hmm. So I, I vote for think, J.D. Vance. Yeah, I think everyone knows, like to your point, everyone knows about President Trump and what he's all about, good or bad. So I don't think anyone's unresolved on that. The question is for her whether she can look okay to the moderate to conservative voters that may have a problem with Mr. Trump's, some of his uh, stuff that he does. And so it's, I think it's, she's the one who really is, is on pressure today to, to perform well. Agreed. Well, all right, then I stand, could, could be stand to be corrected. Okay. So, um, we are going to talk with Kyle, you and I, maybe Drew will, will be up at the Texas OU football game here in about a month or so. Yeah. And we, at this point, there's a little dispute between the State Fair of Texas and our Attorney General, Ken Paxton. Well, if you can't get along with KPAX, who can you get along with? He <laughs> has a, here's the deal. There's a, there's a, dis, uh, they've got a little dispute with the City of Dallas and the State Fair over whether the State Fair can prohibit fairgoers from carrying all firearms, knives with blades over 5.5 mm. inches long, clubs, explosive devices, ammunition, chemical dispensing devices, replicas or hoaxes, or weapons of any kind. Peter, before we can respond, Colin, on, do they limit the club size? Is it clubs? I think whatever you got as a club may, sure. may, may sure. Uh, be okay. So uh, fair's updated policy comes after a 23-year-old open fire and injured three people at the fair last year. So this is not some hypothetical thing from their perspective. So I'll just say, going to that game, there's a lot of drinking. Yep. Um, there are some very upset fans on one side or the other, and the other the side that wins are usually pretty obnoxious, and that include Texas. They, if anyone can believe that Kyle has ever been obnoxious to an OU fan after winning. That's OU never game, happened. Um, you, you may see it this year. So that, and then there's just a lot of people from Dallas, and you're there at night. Not in the best part of town. Dallas. Yeah, yeah. So, let, let me make an observation by way of a story. The first time I went to the OU game, I was 1995, 96, freshman at UT. Wow, you're all, I am old. And I'm walking through the, is it the West End? Where they have those bars and clubs? Yeah, that's kind of where people right. go. Like, so we're walking down the West End, like six or seven guys, six or seven girls, not super late at night, maybe 11 o'clock. And as we're walking, um, a television attached to a hotel stand mm-hmm comes flying out of like a fourth story window of a holiday inn it lands maybe 10 feet away from us and explodes covering us in glass but hurting no one we looked up to the window and a man who was a little bit intoxicated leaned out and said hook of horns (laughs) and so i think the idea of adding firearms what did they say? Chemical weapons, blackjacks, brass knuckles, knives of all sorts to the mix as people are hopped up on corn dogs, wax cup beers, and football, fried chocolate, and whatever. Well, we'll see. It's still, apparently it's still a pending case, so we'll see what, what, what happens there. Okay, let's move on to a new one. Uh, Peter, I want to hear your opinion on that. You think it's a good idea? have machine guns inside the state fair no i that would that would lessen my viewing experience if people were running around with a bunch of guns so now of course you here's the here's the argument you have a law and only criminals don't sure yeah definition so the criminals sure. are going to be the ones with the guns and the law-abiding people who follow the law are not but i would just they do there but, is there is but they're going to have metal detectors yeah they have metal detectors so so they could theoretically weed out those people i would prefer there this be a weapon free area personally but that's you already cannot bring a firearm to a bar Mm -hmm. in texas it's okay to open carry that's fine no problem but there are certain places that just by state law you can't have a firearm hey a fair let's keep it safe let's abide by people's rights to have their arms no problem i bet they place and spend your ten ten dollars in tickets on riding the zipper and and not worry about a a, a mace you know flying around hitting you in the head that means i i gotta say these well-regulated militias they feel like they're getting out of control shooting up schools and whatnot but i don't know okay next one uh, the owner of a hemp dispensary and smoke shop in Waco is suing the city of Waco. Jesus, Waco, give me one week. Yes. 
yeah. when you're not in the news. So they're saying Waco did a raid of their business back in March. They have a license to sell. Uh, they have a consumable hemp license, which grants them the ability to legally manufacture, distribute, and sell consumable hemp products that contain less than 0.3% Delta 9 THC. And I'm looking at Josh. Josh, does the um, the drink that Washington Ho I was about, just about to ask. Is that, what drink? Which is, which is, it's, it's still. It, so that falls under this, oh, a similar, but a similar exception? Yes. Okay. So Delta A is not Delta 9. In the, in the farm bill, it specifically details Delta 9. Okay. Josh knows this because he has no experience with drugs. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. So Josh, Josh Clerk. So this is, this should be legal. What happened was the officers did a, um, sent someone in, bought some stuff, ran some tests that uh, detected Kim, provides to police officers to help them detect drugs or explosives. But they also say in their um, in their disclosure or their, you know, warnings to the officers that they um, it's intended to be used for presumptive identification purposes only, and they should be subjected to more definitive examination by qualified scientists. Man. So, but they just went off the test. They believe based on that it had more than 0.3% rated it, took all their stuff, and now they're keeping it. So the dispensary is... I got out just stoned McLennan County Sheriff's officers hanging out in front of the yeah. you know, the evidence locker. Yeah. I don't know. It sure tastes like 0. 0.09 THC to me. You guys want to hit up Taco Cabana? So I believe on the ballot in Texas, I think the expansion may be a recreational. Um, no, I don't know if it's on the ballot or if it's there was a candidate who posted, looked like smoking a joint saying I'm for legalizing pot and i think even president trump said maybe he would he supported he would vote for the measure he's already eating mcdonald's nonstop. he might as well get a little high before yeah him. so back to baylor and waco well can, can i ask a question yeah uh so we were in toledo oh, so i was in ohio and michigan okay as was peter yeah so apparently they just i wasn't in toledo just right, right. yeah we were in ohio and 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 michigan yeah and uh they recently passed the bill legalizing, like, all marijuana. Michigan has it, yeah. Michigan. And so, number one, the majority of the tailgates around Michigan Stadium smell like a Rastafarian's haircut. Okay. So did Ann Arbor Friday night. Before. Yeah, and it was... And here's the other thing. If you take 100% of the billboards mm -hmm. in and around Detroit and Ann Arbor, okay... 10% of them are for cars, 10% are for plaintiff's lawyers, and the remaining 80% are for the House of Dank, the yep. come get free weed at 101 Weed Street. Did you say casinos? Because there's a bunch of casino ads. There were casino ads too, but casinos with weed. Yeah. It was, I was kind of stunned, and my, my cousins who live up there, who I would say socially are quite liberal, were like, Man, this everybody being stoned all the time is really slowing us down. <laughs> and, you know, I guess people should be able to do what they want. But I also don't think people should be like, I, I, the problem is you can't really treat it like alcohol because you can't test somebody for it. There's plenty worse things that happen because of alcohol. Than sure. sure. That's documented. No, it's not. That's true. But I don't know that I want people like tearing down I-45 after blazing all morning. I don't know. Well, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's not, or 13 miles an hour. Right. Here's what I say. These are great points, right? We're, uh, we're still a few decades into this kind of nationwide lax on approving marijuana, not approving marijuana. It's state by state, and that's okay. Um, just like after Prohibition, once you say everybody can drink, I'm sure there was a lot of binge drinking. I'm sure there were a lot of things. Yeah. It's going to take the, the country in each state some time to understand what's happening with the legalization of the use of that substance. But in a state except like for Texas, Texas, except for people in Arkansas, sure. there will be no change sure, in their sure, mental sure. capacity. But it's the exact same. Like Texas, you have to remember, and this is not political, but uh, we always see our governors, our local representative saying look the biggest problem in this state is the border the biggest problem in this state is something else nobody's complaining about cbd levels well, nobody's complaining about marijuana so to hand these people up at waco which 
I'm sorry. Waco doesn't have the best history of treating people that are outside the norm. I don't need to go into details, I'm sure. I'm not here to say Schiff and Joanne are normal. So, cut about brain. Kind of, this is not where the focus of the tax dollars should be. Sure. Uh, when you come in to Michigan uh, from the other side, uh, from the Indiana side, the first lawyer, plaintiff lawyer billboard you see, Sarkeesian and Sarkeesian. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's a tough one. S-A-R-K-I-S-I-A-N? I think so. All right, next Baylor story, or Waco story. Baylor, it's a, it says, right, it's, a, it's just like the Kardashians. Yeah. They're um, Persian. Armenian. They're Armenian. Uh, yeah, I saw an interview that he gave to Arnold Nitkin where he said his family was from Iran. Really? So, um, um, all right, former Baylor University soccer player who alleged she suffered traumatic brain injuries during dangerous header drills and practices settled her lawsuit against the university. Hmm. She... I uh, filed it in federal court. She had sued only the school. Uh, settled it out, right? I believe seventy-five grand. No, she had. She had said, you know, reporters oh, always know. Oh, well, okay. Yeah, it's federal court, so she had pled over seventy-five thousand. That's diversity. Yeah, yeah. Uh, although it's probably a federal question. You know, is a federal question anyway. Federal statute, but um, those for y'all, you probably always got this. Is uh, people would say, well, "How much are we suing for?" And you go, "That yeah. isn't." Yeah, her. Like, yeah. like that has no bearing on anything. Yeah. You can sue for eight trillion dollars, and that means nothing. Just but number only paper. The only thing is, your your you are kind of limited if on your to your amount, right? I mean, I you, think can, you can you get more. Or, yeah, I mean, you could yeah. prove right or or on jury to agree right. to her fact. On. But anyhow, um, so she she said that her coach forced them to do repeated heading of the mm-hmm. ball, which I think there's. I've seen studies that a tremendous amount of concussions come in soccer from that. So for kids' soccer these days, most of the games under a certain age, they're, heading is the same penalty as kicking somebody. Okay. Like you're not allowed to touch the ball with any way your feet, not your face, not your head, not your arm. Then they okay. don't allow it. No header drills, no headers uh, in the game. Got it. Um, so anyhow, so that case settled after mediation, and so uh, – that was good. We'll move on. We, we're going to get into football here very soon. Well, we, we just got through the football. Host. Yeah. If you go by the European model. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Okay. Last. Let's, let's go ahead. Think about the, the soccer. Uh, I think it's important yeah. to bring up because, you know, in my my niche, if you will, representing injured children, there are a lot of sports injuries. You, you have the middle school, the high school, the, the you know, team sport injuries. This case does show a very clear delineation between what are the normal injuries you would suspect from playing this sport versus ones you don't. And those ones you don't could be because of training, could be because of um, foul play or horse play or whatever it may be. Not to say this case involves that, and obviously it's settled and who knows why, but there is always a situation that even though there is a liability of a or uh, of risk, or excuse me, um, an assumption of risk, and you could waive liability for playing a sport. There could be activities associated with that sport that aren't normal, that aren't considered part of the daily practice. And I guess now, the, now the question is: is making people do header drills within the range of normal? Right. Well, I, and that's a fact that you're right. Header drills might be. Hey, you're right. so how much? So how long? I guess my question is, so for the NFL cases, they had a brain study going back about head trauma mm-hmm. that was 60 years old. They knew repeated concussions were going to cause long-term problems. Mm-hmm. They knew it. And they didn't tell players. That's, that was the crux of that lawsuit. And I guess my, my thing that I wonder about on this, this women's soccer lawsuit is, you know, is there now, uh, is there like a published standard that says you should avoid this kind of repetitive contact? 
I, I, my guess is there probably is. There's all kinds of players associations. I mean, like I, I don't know. I need we, to know a little bit more. You would think that there shouldn't be because that's part of the assumed risk. I mean, heading a ball in soccer is normal. That's something that females, males do. But well, so is, but doing so it, how would you train for it? But doing so is how. I mean, in football, they kind of knew that running into each other's well, football yeah, as well. You know, that that didn't stop a concussion lawsuit from being successful. Well. Correct. That's that fine gray line. How much is normal? How much is non normal? And for those normal risks, how do we better prepare against them? Yeah. Is it a policy? Is it a play thing? Is it an equipment thing? Is it a training thing? I say we get these women soccer players a helmet. Yeah. Also, to be fair, given the history of women's soccer and Baylor, this lady made it out okay. Yeah. I mean, she was. She could have gone a whole lot worse for a women's sure soccer player. For so that's the thing, right? I'm sure we get so much pain, whatever it may have been. I'm just saying, it's been rough for the women's soccer team in Waco. Okay, so next story: Burger Chain, uh, New York-based Burger Chain with one location in Dallas is being sued. Are for, we done with football? No, no, no. We're going to no. get into pro football. That there's four or five stories there. So, Burger Chain is being sued for infringing on a trademark. The restaurant is. Holy cow, a New York-based chain with one location in Dallas. And they are facing a lawsuit from the estate of the late sportscaster, Harry Carey. Because he used the words holy cow? He, the estate, claims that they own the phrase holy cow. And then let me say, I went, took, we went to Chicago after the game. Did you go here to this? Plane? No, no, no. I went, when I was, went to Chicago after the Michigan game, and we went to Wrigley Field. Uh, my wife's first time there. We're... Harry Carey used to, you know, commentate and sing. So they, I didn't know this. I would think, holy cow, is pretty, that's a pretty broad term. Don't. But you got some, Joshua? Okay. Um, I don't know if you guys know this, but I own the phrase, happy birthday. Yeah. You do. Uh Uh-huh. I also invented the semicolon. So there's other. Use it. Yeah. Uh, Not yet. So the lawsuit alleges holy cow restaurant is using the name to create a false association with the Harry Carey. The, the, there are there Harry Carey restaurants out there. Do they have pictures of Harry Carey? And to willfully, intentionally, and unlawfully misappropriate the tremendous goodwill of Harry Carey Limited's well-known, if not famous, Holy Calamar. So they've tremendous got... Tremendous, too. So tremendous that we've never heard of it. Well, that's what I was going to say. In these cases, and I'm not a trademark lawyer, but I know there's a lot of... This came up in the um, South Texas versus Houston law... You do these surveys where you try to ask the community, like, who associates holy cow with... I associate associate holy cow with Buddhism. Yeah, well, that's a good point. But, I, I mean, mm-hmm. and I think we're all probably pretty big sports fans, and I would never, never associated holy this, cow with... Uh, this is how out of touch I am with Chicago and Harry Carey, though I've been to games there. Mm-hmm. My footstone for Harry Carey is the Saturday Night Live impersonation where Will Ferrell does the, hey... Yeah. What's your favorite planet? Mine's the sun. Yeah. If you were a hot dog, would you eat yourself? Like, but he, I don't know if he said, yeah. would you eat yourself? I probably would. Is this uh, you doing your Will Ferrell impersonation? I mean, of I, Harry Carey. I was going to do Darth Vader, so you're welcome. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that sounds like a silly lawsuit. Yeah. I, and it, it apparently there's, I mean, it's another, holy cow is based in New York and they've already had the, the restaurant. So they've been blowing and going. So why never? Because that's one thing you lose your rights if you don't assert them. That's why people overly kind of protect their. Can we uh, can we bleep things out in this? Uh, yeah, we can, but sometimes they don't always get bleeped out, okay. Amanda. I, I, I'll, I'll just go to say that I think that this is bullshit. Yeah. Well, you can curse. Yeah. It's crazy. It's this kind of. Yeah. Either way, we're going to have to bleep that out because bullshit is actually a trademark phrase that I own. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, just bill it. Just pay him a. Animal. You oh, can say full of do. When we're talking about something like this, somebody trying to get off the ground, start a business this is America, they have something that thinks a good idea. It's so hard for an individual to say, before I start this business, let me do a, a very comprehensive audit of any other business in the contiguous 40. Not even a business. A plus everything else to make sure. Into it. It's crazy. Um, and this gets into it, and maybe all of the scene of this week on TikTok or right, the past few weeks, the term uh, demir uh, is very popular, right? We had a TikToker the other day. No, it's or demir. I don't know. We had a, a we had the Instagram influencer who had like she wanted to say that she owned khaki. 
Oh, um, no, it was like certain hues or certain color palettes. Of which khaki is a color. I guess so. Well, um, it's a color. But look, when it comes to the demerit, truly, this this woman in her video came up, with the, came up with the line, if you will. Sure. Now, someone beat her to trademarking that. Well, and great. And that's a process of the legal system, and we're lawyers, and we appreciate that. But at a certain point, it's just like, damn, man, this is a, yeah, let's, let's fight. Yes. Let these people enjoy, but then create it. Drew, Drew, like in Dallas, just like this woman on TikTok. Drew Bavona, you have to trademark a catchphrase. Sure. Your children are going to inherit it. What's it going to be? Well, technically, my trademark is the voice for kids, which yeah. has been trademarked. The voice for kids? Yes. I yeah. thought you'd be something a little bit snappier. No. Well, considering that I'm the voice for kids, I can't think of how much snappier I can be. Yeah. yeah. So Peter's is let's get back on track. <laughs> <laughs> which you took the words right out of him. He says, and he says, Kyle, we're moving on to the next story. Let's get, let's get back on track. Let's do that, Kyle. Let's get. Dang it, John. Thank you, Kyle. Uh, next one. This, this kind of correlates with what uh, some of our prior guests, Brett Stanley, uh, who handles a lot of the ride-sharing litigation, he's not involved in this case, so that at least that I could sell from looking at it online. He was in Michigan. Uh, yes, he was. I saw his post saw on them. Yeah. A ride-share driver who, for Lyft who says he was violently attacked by a passenger on Valentine's Day has now filed a lawsuit. He's suing Lyft and Memorial Hermann Hospital where he picked the p- passenger up. Okay, so here's the backstory from the summary. So he gets called Memorial Herman Med Center. Memorial Herman, I think it was um, the one because that's where I live. That's a rough. Denver, what? That's a rough neighborhood. Yeah. Well, anyhow, I don't know which Memorial Herman. So they, according to the lawsuit, Memorial Herman personnel call the lift. So it's under someone else's account, um, and they have a guy who apparently was acting uh, a little erratic at the hospital, and they wanted him to leave. So they call him the lift, throw him in the lift. The guy immediately starts trying to strangle. The Lyft driver, and so he's suing Memorial Herman, saying you stuck someone in my car. Yeah, that, that was a, a risk, and you didn't yeah. tell me what well, they're in and, and Lyft, no. you know, Lyft. I'm sure would say, uh, yeah, yeah, it could be. No, Lyft said, um, I'm sure Lyft will say they you know, they basically game the system, right? Because if you right, call, right, right, right. Crypt, how are we supposed to know? Yeah, and so this is going to be this will be an interesting one. I mean, I just. Uh, <laughs> It would have been great if they would have. Uh, it would have been great if they would have put us both in a like an Uber and said, "You guys go pick up from Crazos at the VA, VA psych ward, yeah. and let's go to Montrose and get freaky deaky do." So that that's an interesting legal um, kind of component to that. Okay, next story. I'm trying to move us along because we got a lot of NFL news. Okay, last one of the non NFL. But what's the NFL theme song? Can we put the NFL theme song in at this point? No, uh, oh, yeah. yeah, I think if as long as it's only six seconds, maybe Josh can. Are you get telling up. me the NFL has copyrighted their theme song? All of it. Holy cow! What's next? Yeah, no, I, I, I don't. There's Lizzo news. Um, she's just taking a break. She's taking a. Uh, a sabbatical for a year because banana of banana breaks. Yeah, yeah. So um, we've covered that enough. These are, there's enough news stories that I you can Google, cover. Google Lizzo and bananas. Yeah, California State Senator forced chief of according to the lawsuit, California State Senator forced chief of staff to perform sex acts that left him injured. So there's a California State Senator who was a Democrat. She just switched to Republican. Her former chief of staff claims that. He was pressured by her as part of a um, kind of a condition of his employment to provide uh, sexual acts on her. And as a result of that. So tell us what things are like at Taft Mediation. No, not not that. Do you have a policy? <laughs> it's just me. So just, whatever. Uh, it's Peter. Yeah. He's not. Peter harassing himself. It's, it's just me. So that, that is one of the reasons why I did it this way, because I didn't want to have employees. And because huh. uh, it's just. It's just, you know, easier to do it this way. Sure. So, uh, so I, this is in Fox News story. So, Amanda, if you need to bleep it out, I'm quoting from a Fox News story, okay? During a very reputable source, yeah. fair and balanced. Fair. I'm just balanced. saying it's known as more conservative. Not, you know, when it's not fair. And- well, I'm just saying it's known as more conservative. So, if they're, you know, putting it out there. Lay it on us. During their final encounter, this is a quote. Condit, who's the plaintiff, alleges that Alvarado Gill, who's the defendant, forced him to perform oral sex in a car seat that left him with three herniated discs in his back and a collapsed hip, 
from, story of my life. From <laughs> how to hear the story is from it? having to twist and contort his body in the confined space of the car, mm-hmm. according to the lawsuit. And let me reiterate, I'm reading from a Fox News story that is quoting from the lawsuit. Uh, I have no idea what a collapsed tip is. I did a lot of personal injury. Well, it's a good thing Bill's not hired. I've never seen a collapsed tip, honestly, in my professional experience. But yeah. surely it could happen from aggressive. So. Ratio. What's the hold on? What's the name of this female Republican? Her last name is Alvarado Gill. So, you know, listen, I'm not, I'm not done with the quotes from the story. Oh, great! Funded, the plaintiff claims he used his injury as an excuse to refuse Alvarado Gill's demands for more, which caused Alvarado Gill to become unhappy. And the fifth fracture. I mean, and, which caused Alvarado Gill to become unhappy and threaten his job. So she then retaliated, issued him a disciplinary letter accusing him of inappropriate behavior. So they've got a lawsuit on file. There's no, I mean, you know, there's, there's, it's an employment case. It's a federal case. So, but I guess I'm not well versed on that, but those, mm-hmm. that is the I mean, kind of lawsuit that's out there. Mr. Condit, I mean, whatever you're doing. <laughs> yeah. Congratulations. Miss Alvarado Hill, give this poor man a break. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that was the, uh, can I also ask who was driving? Yeah, good question. Hopefully, was it one of those Tesla trucks? Hopefully, neither of them. And was um, the car seat not like a child's car seat? That's Mike. Was, was it a child or toddler, or was it? He's the voice for children. The adults. I'm sure you can. Uh, it's in. I, I, I'm sure it's in D.C. So you can pull it out, baby. Really, hold on. A story like this just reminds me of. Alvarado Hill, Audrey, uh, Alvarado, she sometimes, sometimes be a little lost. Um, and I wish the best upon both of these litigants. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Okay. I think we're, we're into the NFL. I can, I can kind of see, I've looked up pictures of the both of them and I can see how you could get hurt. Okay. I can see that now. All right. All right. Very good. Okay. Well, we're going to go to NFL, Kyle. We is could, it, you guys could probably go for a lot a longer with that story, but we only have so much tape. There's a limit to what a man can endure. Yeah. Okay. So fair. fair. This is this was breaking at it as it just us going on. Uh, and this is crazy, Peter. It's twenty twenty four. Everything that's going along on in in the world today, everything the inequality, the most breaking story is what you're about to say. Yeah. So, well, we're gonna have there's several breaking stories just in the last couple of days in the NFL, but this one was just like hot off the press. Um, Former NFL Adrian Peterson has been ordered by a Houston judge to turn over numerous assets, which we call a turnover order in the business, uh, as a means towards paying a debt that is estimated at more than $12 million. Court-appointed receiver Robert Burleff, who does that quite a bit of that work here in Houston, he requested the order in July uh, and said he's known to have numerous assets in Missouri City. So the judge on Monday ordered constables in Fort Bend County to accompany Burleff to Peterson's residence to keep the peace, I guess, as they start taking stuff. So either of y'all ever been involved with a post-judgment collection involving a receiver and constables? I am yeah, not. I'm yeah. Not. Yeah. There you go. Well, that's happening yeah. now. So I don't know. Maybe they you are, you are NFL famous Adrian Peterson. Why are you living in Missouri City? Oh, a lot of NFL athletes live in Fort Bend County. Oh. Yes. Yeah. Are they yeah. Are quality of life out there? Yeah. Great yeah. properties, great homes. Yeah. I've I've seen some other pictures of some of his homes. I mean, they're they're very nice. And this, is that his primary residence? Don't know. He I mean, he's from Texas. You know, I mean, he's from Palestine, but he's yeah. a filthy sooner now. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We have I hope covered they take everything he has. We have covered the Deshaun Watson litigation history at length in the past, but there is a new lawsuit that uh, uh, Tony Busby has filed on behalf of a. Lady who claims um, she, she went on, a, I guess, a blind date with them, and they went to. Her, they wanted to have the date. Mm-hmm. Is there such a thing as caveat emptor anymore? Well, I think this. Do this, you know who Deshaun Watson is? What, no, is that, is that the, Latson? The uh, yeah, the alleged incident happened in October 2020. So this was a oh, free oh, needle. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, this was before everything came up. So thank God there's only one now. Yeah. So. She, according to the lawsuit, they, she wanted to have dinner with him at her house. She comes in, mm. she goes into the, uh, she wasn't ready yet. So, uh, he came in, she went back into her bathroom to finish getting ready. 
And he came out, she came out, according to her, he was completely naked, naked. I said naked, because I'm from Texas. Who t- uh, and that's I, the difference between egg and egg. Yeah. Y'all say, y'all say <laughs> naked, but we're not, but now I said egg. You said naked in North Louisiana? Well, I, I think we said naked for yeah. a bit, yeah. right. yeah. and then I became educated, and now it's naked. All right, so uh, so he's naked, as the legal term is used, while le- lying on his stomach, asked her to massage his buttocks. Mm-hmm. Uh, she was... <laughs> So then it's, she's, she's scared and ultimately there, there's uh, sexual um, inappropriate contact without consent. So um, I do believe, you know, the, the story says the accusation of the lawsuit are similar to past filings against Watson. That's true. Um, yeah. And so I think all the other cases that Tony Busby had against them were settled a long time ago. So. This is new. She claimed to attempt to resolve the issues with Watson privately before deciding to file suit. Query. Um, I, I think, generally speaking, the thought is that in the opening weekend that Mr. Watson didn't look too good for the Browns, and the but he has a huge contract. Does this get them possibly out? I doubt it. I think Mr. Watson has very good uh, – Agency representation and legal representation. I'm guessing they probably put something, they in, something in there on the. Uh, yeah. What are they? The main need, but it, it at least creates a hurdle. What do they call that clause? Uh, morals clause. Yeah. Yeah. Morals clause. Uh, so anyhow, that there, you know, like I said, we've talked that that series of cases. I think at length. So that's out there. Um, Brandon. Speaking of Tony Busby, Brandon McManus was an uh, ex Jaguars kicker that was sued earlier by Mr. Busby, accused of sexually assaulting and harassing a pair of flight attendants on a a team's, one of their charters. We've talked about that before. They filed as John Doe, or Jane Doe, in that case. Um, The Florida judge, Michael Sherritt, granted a motion to dismiss the case because they used the name Jane Doe, but he said um, they, you know, if they refile it, they had 10 days to amend the lawsuit using their name. So they've done that. His, uh, their names are Daisy Torres and Nicole Anderson. So they're well. If you were trying to stay anonymous, Daisy and Nicole, Peter just blew that for me. Well, it's on Sports Yahoo, so much bigger is, platform. Is the Deshaun Watson thing? Uh, is it, what court is that filed in? Uh, is it Harris County District District Court? It's in Harris County District Court. I pulled the I pulled it. Let me see if I can find the um, if it has it on the filing. Uh, 61st, that is Gerilyn Maynard, um, is where it is. I don't, they were all, they had all been in the prior litigation. They had all been, I think, assigned to, I think, Judge Collier. Uh, so if that's, or like go back. Yeah, it may go back to the judge who handled the, the ones, because she did have to deal with a lot of stuff on that case. So uh, maybe for efficiency standpoint, they, uh, I, I have a lot to say about that case, but I can't imagine any of it will make it past the beep process. So mm-hmm. I'm just going to. Yeah, it's not really, I guess, a case for discussion. I'll just well I, listen to the factual update. I do think a case like this brings up an important point that it's important to understand women's rights and give deference to these types of allegations and let the legal process run its course. Let those facts develop through discovery like we do all the times in the discovery process. Even if... Some of the claims sound complicated, suspect. The woman is entitled to her claims, and he is entitled to his defense. Unfortunately, he's had a numerous amount of these defenses. I think at this but point, it, it goes to saying it's complicated. Kyle, it's complicated. Uh, we can't dismiss her just like we can't dismiss him. Uh, let's, let's just say this. If you are a lady at home cooking dinner, Okay, and fixing your makeup, and Deshaun Watson is in the living room. The date should end right there. Hmm. Do not. And she didn't, but she didn't know. Um, I, I know, and I'm not saying this about her. I'm saying for all ladies into the future. Oh, now at this point, sure. For all ladies into the future, uh, do not invite Deshaun Watson over. If a guy comes over, uh, for a second, right? If a guy shows up and he says, "My name is Washon Dotson." Be suspicious. <laughs> sure. Right? If you're if you're doing stir fry and your brand new date shows up and says, Would you massage my buttocks? These should raise red flags. Yeah. Well, 
But that still doesn't excuse it if it truly did happen. I, I did not say that at all. And I will, like I said, Tony has been very clear on those prior ones. He doesn't file BS cases, so he vetted them all and ta- talked to the last ones. He said, I've talked to them all. I wouldn't have filed this case if I didn't believe in it. So I assume he's going to... Hold on. Also, I thought all that applies, so I didn't believe in their faces. Dude, just yeah. Him a lot. yeah. I don't fly, but be a that be- I have be- thought about what I just said for 10 seconds, and I want to make an addendum. Yeah. Not only should women be wary of people named Deshaun Watson. Deshaun, quit showing up to ladies' houses unattended. Take a chaperone. Take an agent. Yeah, you got to get smart about it. For well, I think, yes. Yeah, I said, right, like, Deshaun, people are getting tired of this act. Well, again, this is, this is before everything came to a head. So I, I assume he is... Um, on the straight and narrow. Yeah. Like I said, he is very well represented by his agent With and Lord. With his claims came well before then, and he very well, if he was doing something that ever really could have changed to yeah. that. They say. Okay, so we are going to, we've gone quite a while, and this is the big, this is where we sit today, probably the biggest NFL story, and that is uh, Dolphins wide receiver Tyreek Hill being pulled over by Miami-Dade police officers right before the game, their first game of the season. He ended up being able to, play we got into a celebration on a touchdown that kind of alluded to the arrest the body cam footage has been released and it is uh, kind of a rorschach i think if that's the term test as to how people view it definitely people in the twitter verse that think he he uh, could have handled himself differently and maybe caused it i think probably the majority of opinion is that these officers were way too aggressive with him and way too quick and there are four of them um, like just seemed like a lot of overkill and they were the uh, uh, escalators of tensions mm-hmm. rather than him. And um, so that, like I said, everyone has a view on this after watching it. I mean, we watched it. It's not, I don't, I don't think it reflects well on the police and, and just in my view. I, but um, so here, I thought we, Rather than sit around and talk about it, argue about whether he should have done something or they should have done something, everyone can make their own opinions. It's on video. Um, but I thought as we could kind of talk, because Drew, you mentioned that you had developed a program to go talk to kids about how to make sure their interactions with the police are as low escalation as possible. And I, I found an article that's kind of collected a lot of opinions from other lawyers that, that are in the criminal space criminal justice space on what to do so drew what what kind of stuff do you in your program do y'all um, recommend to the young people on how they should uh, interact with police when they're being pulled over or not detained but encountering a police officer yes and it, let's be clear with when i moved here um, i held through the houston young lawyers association developed a program called know your rights and that's based off a national program. So I don't want to take all the credit for it. But the goal was how do you go into at risk schools, especially high schools, and teach individuals their rights in regards to police encounters? That's what we did for a few years. And PILA is still doing it today. And the goal is all about look, police encounters are so high risk. There's so many emotions. The police are scared. You're scared. You're a scary environment, whatever it may be. And that so often leads to bad results. It's to teach people that even if you feel that your rights are being abused or you feel as if you were pulled over incorrectly or you feel as if you're you're getting a ticket that's not fair, you have a platform. You have the opportunity to beat that to argue against that, but that opportunity is in court. It's through a lawsuit, uh, lawsuit is through a challenge. It's, it's challenging that tickets you got, or it's bringing a claim against the police department. It is not on the street. Mm -hmm. I always told children when I was in the schools doing this program that you can't litigate this on the street. There's nothing that you're go- going to say that's going to convince this police officer to be less aggressive. There's no judge there to make a There's no judge there. And the crazy thing is, is that advice to young people applies to adults, uh-huh. right? Even as an adult, you may be right and you may have the upper hand argument wise but the police still have the authority so there has to be some give and take there 
Yeah. So, I mean, I have a lot of opinions about this, which we've kind of discussed prior. Uh, and I, let, me, let me throw this out there. Can you imagine what kind of world we lived in before body cams and dash cams? Yeah. Like back when it was just what the guys in a uniform said mm-hmm. uh, against you, what you said. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's it's pretty wild to me that even though, you know, in a world where there's video cameras and, and in a world where theoretically the police should have their body cam on at basically all times during the times that they interact with the public, uh, it's, it is a, uh, it is a wild world that we live in. And I, I went and saw Dave Chappelle one time, mm-hmm. actually a few times. And he has this, if for him, it's a joke. Uh, he says, you know how I know it's great to be white. He said, cause I'm like amongst the richest of black people and none of you would trade places with me. <laughs> and which is pretty poignant. Um, and Look, Tariq Hill has had his run-ins with the law prior to this. Mm-hmm. Uh, and again, you can go on Twitter and all kinds of people will call these cops a hero. All kinds of people will say Tariq Hill did nothing wrong. I don't know that either of those are 100% accurate. Um, but it is, as, as an attorney, I think about who, who has dealt with the police force. Uh, and in instances, the good and bad. Um, it is. It, it kind of is, is wild to me that some of this stuff still goes on uh, in a world where everything is recorded. Yep. And it's still, I'll only say this uh, to, to end, it's not a perfect system. Right. And there are mistakes that happen by the accused. There are mistakes that happen by the law enforcers. But if we look at this in the bigger picture, three or 400 years ago, if Peter was the king, he could simply say, Drew, me, committed a crime. I lose my head that day. There are no due process. We've come so far from that. And there are laws and there are options. Unfortunately, today, it's just complicated. It's so complicated to get that due process, to get that argument, to get that fair share. However, luckily, you have more and more people like happen in this case that are videotaping what's going on, that are there as witnesses, so that all of those facts can be applied in a court where it should be, not the side of the street, not by the stadium, in a court to get to the right name. Yeah, well, the I mean, the thing is on the videos, there's no videos of the million encounters that are perfectly fine and cop perform. So that's the thing. We only see the bad stuff, and there's a million encounters every week between... Uh, Citizens, but and but, but also, the counter to that is, police are allowed to be judged by their bad apple. They are professionals. They are trained to do this. Objectively, wait, is it our, our, our lawyers only objectively. Are lawyers allowed to be judged by their bad apple? Yeah. Like, did, are you, if you're at a bar and you're on the lawyers, like, they all suck. You go, why? Because this one guy committed malpractice and lost my kid's case. You're like, well, I didn't do that. That's one bad apple. I, I'm just saying Police have a job where they're trained not to do this, or at least they should be now, not to escalate a situation. Yeah. And look, very rarely does a lawyer screw up cost someone their life. But uh, in many instances, people's lives, their liberty, their family relations are at risk. And when the stakes are that high... It, 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 you got you, you don't get to say well they do it right most of the time they they got to be right almost all the time especially in a situation where they're taking an affirmative step okay i mean that's the way i see it well i would say to drew's point i mean it's kind of like y'all y'all's life if you're in front of a judge that's that's hostile to you and is not ruling with you you're not going to get anywhere yelling at the judge or being aggressive with the judge. You just need to say, Your Honor, respectfully, please make your ruling so I can appeal. Oh, sure. And move on down the road. Because otherwise, they, you just have, have to acknowledge, these people have more power than I do under the law. And that's what we tried to teach in Know Your Right. Yeah. They have more power inherently on top of you. Say that argument. Get to court. Right. On. But yeah. I, I, I totally, 100% absolutely agree with that. I think the concern in certain communities is what's coming when you get pulled over mm-hmm. is street justice. 
And it's not going to be, and it's coming to you one way or the other. Mm -hmm. And so if you've got 15 seconds and you know, as soon as you unlock that door, street justice is coming, you better get out of yourself. And yeah. you better call for him. I do think it's important to say, so we play devil's advocate on this program. Mm -hmm. There is no law against being a dick to the police. I don't know. You can be, it's true. <laughs> you can be aggressive. You can be a dead. That's fine. It's your right. There is Supreme Court precedent. We talked about it, Peter, earlier mm -hmm. in the day before the podcast of the woman who was arrested for not wearing a seatbelt. Yeah. She was dragged off to jail. And that went to the Supreme Court. And this is where out whether there's no law against the police being a dead. Yeah. Oh, right. The police can be a dick as well. So when you look at it, you can both be dissed. He can be aggressive. You can be aggressive. She can be aggressive. She can be aggressive. Fine. How do we mitigate this encounter and, and make it go away and be done with it yeah. and move on? So here's, and it's never escalating it with emotions or with argument or with running or with anything. Right. So there's a USA Today article where a, a very good reporter collected kind of some opinions from really lawyers all over the country. And so the consensus from this article, their advice is pull over to a safe place, well lit space, uh, turn off the car. Switch on the car's dome light if it's dark outside. Place your hands visibly on the steering wheel. Mm -hmm. Roll down your windows. Have your license and registration ready. You, they don't necessarily have to tell you why they pulled you over. I think most lawyers would tell you, don't ever admit, like, oh, yeah, God, I was going fast. You got me. Sure. I mean, but you don't have to do that. Just say, if they say, why were you seeking your lawyer to tell you that? You, yeah. I mean, most lawyers will say, if the police officer says, why were you going so fast to answer I didn't think I was going that fast, but that's okay. I'll, if I need to get a ticket, I'll please give me a ticket. Um, and usually they'll, they don't, most of them don't like really push you on that. If you give them and that response. And the Peter here too, and not to say he pled guilty and it's his fault, mm -hmm. but he's driving the McLaren. Just pull over, yes. buddy. You're on your way to practice. Pull over, roll the window down. Here's my license. Here's my registration. Oh, you said I was going 55. No comment. Give me the ticket. Thank you so much. I'll sign. I'll find it later. I'm going to go on. And I, I just want to point out, that is a really easy thing to accept and follow for us three. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, it's... But well, why not for you? No, we, no, we because got... Because... People like him have a history of having somewhat of a different interaction with law enforcement in America. So Sandra Bland in the next county over, that's very, she got pulled over for making a lane change, allegedly without using her blinker. She got dragged out of her vehicle. She got taken to jail where she sat for three days and three days later was found dead. So, Kyle, so the, the question is, Oh, I agree with following all this stuff. I think it's a great idea. It's what I teach my kids to do. I'm just saying. It's an easy thing for us to say because I've never been pulled over in my life and been concerned with that, that I wasn't going to get a fair shake in the legal system, that I was going to get harassed by a cop, that I was going to get thrown on the ground and handcuffed. That's not how life is very. And I think it's important. I, know, I don't blame Mr. Mill for any of this. Yeah. I mean, sure, well, he, he was a dick about it. But I think this is all on the PD that showed up. I don't think he should have been treated like that. But this is a great hockey point for us sure. to go through. A couple of things. If you watch the video, and again, this is my opinion, but I think I, I don't know how you could disagree. They had four motorcycle officers there, and they appeared when they approached that they were geared up and very— For a 15-mile over style. Yeah. yeah. So that's—I mean, it looked like this was—I mean, this is what we talked afterwards— Mr. Hill has no obligation and probably does not have any training on how to de-escalate tense situations. Police officers are supposed to be trained and supposed to be experts in that field. And there's and these guys, rumbling. and these guys clearly were did they escalated it. But so often we see where police officers hate to have their authority challenged. Yeah. That's right. How do you know me? I know what's up. I'm the police officer. Right. And that's so often for those types of police officers. When I get pulled over in a situation. When I get pulled over in the West U, I say, do you know who my dad is? Mm -hmm. And then they say, who? And I go, Peter Tapp. Yeah. Oh, I wanted to close. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. closing out. Yeah. I'll close with this. Uh, I say, it's Michael Taft's dad. Here's, yeah. Here's the last uh, bit of, so retired police detective Bill Richardson, who clearly 
is not raising young children in 2024, he says this, if the officer says, turn off the radio and shut up, turn off the radio and shut up. You need to talk to the officer like you would talk to your priest or to your parents. <laughs> so we're shot. If we're going to Bill. We're going to send reti- retired detective Bill Richardson, the Herbert daughters, over for a week man, man, uh, man, 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 man. of respect <laughs> as they define that <laughs> respect training. All right. Well, this has been. We've covered some serious ground today. I appreciate y'all uh, coming on. You drew you coming on and giving your thing for right. expert. Uh, uh, great. Yeah, I don't know if it's expert, but I'm really tall. Yeah, so I'm gonna apologize for this tablecloth. Honestly, really, the whole time I think it's it, it's 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 not nice. You know? Kyle, you can take the tablecloth back and put it back on your bed from which it came. Okay, yeah. everyone, the black satin sheets. Uh, I was just gonna say this is not satin. Yeah, this is not satin. All right. Or really greens. If you uh, can like, subscribe, follow us on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, X, um, Facebook, maybe. And Spotify is where you get your podcast, Apple, anywhere you get your podcast. special thanks to Chaos Media Group and Amanda or Strategies and not Bill Ogden. Bill, uh, we did never understood gluttony until we saw it in you. I don't know if you'll recover. And if you don't, that's fine. And Drew Bavona, who you can see his episode from a couple weeks back. You, he's all over the place on, I believe it's Bavona Law every way. BavonaLaw.com and Bavona Law everywhere. Basically. And, and the, the voice for kids. The voice Train for children. I am the voice for kids. Kids. Voice for kids, trademarked. Trademark. All right. Well, we'll leave you with a hearty holy cow. All right. Thank you very much. We'll see you next time. Good night.